mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about appropriating the promises. You ought to be believing for many promises. There are thousands of promises in the Bible. I've heard uh, more than 7,000 promises. And we know from uh, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 that in Christ, they are all yes for you. And then all you have to do is say amen. Uh, that's a, mm -hmm. That makes it very clear, very, very concise. Uh, but there are a lot of other elements we want to talk about tonight. And one of the things I want to say is that the Lord is a shield and a son, our son and shield, and he will withhold no good thing Amen. from the righteous. That is Psalm 84, 11. And uh, it, it, it's good to know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, because Christ became sin. Who He didn't know any sin. He had not sinned, but he became sin so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so you are righteous. Uh, it's not because of what you do or what you did. It's because of Jesus Christ and what he did. Mm -hmm. And once you accepted him as your uh, savior, then you were moved uh, from being a sinner to being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So that's who you are, and he will withhold no good thing from you. So let's think about how do we appropriate promises. All of those promises are even some that we need desperately in our lives. We all need things. We all, and God is promising many things to us, and we need to know how to appropriate them. And my approach tonight is to say there is no formula that you can use that will guarantee that you appropriate the promises. Can you give us a definition of a appropriate? To, to possess the promises. He has, mm -hmm. he has uh, promised you, but that promise is setting in heavenly places, and uh, uh, we need to bring it to earth. That's what I'm talking about, appropriating the promises. It's in heaven. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's all available for you, and in Christ Jesus, it's yours. It's yes for you. It's possessing uh, it. And so how do we possess it? And that is bringing it into the natural realm. Uh, that's that's where, where we are, and that's where we need to, uh, to, to receive it. So that, again, there is no formula that will work. But there are some elements we need to be aware of. And then knowing these elements, we can develop a strategy of what it is that we need to do, what you need to do. So first of all, you need to discover a promise. What promise is God uh, offering to you? He is making many promises to you. And so we're wanting to know how to possess those. So it starts with the discovery process. And you may discover it uh, just by reading uh, the Bible and, and the Word of God. And, and uh, some of those may become alive to you. Now, when it becomes alive to you, that's for you. That, that belongs to you. And you can appropriate it. You can possess that promise. It may be a uh, an issue that you're dealing with, a family member, a child, a spouse, uh, a parent. Uh, there are many, many different problems you may be uh, facing. And what you need, the solution to every one of your problems is a promise. God mm -hmm. will offer you the promise that will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's... Just a, let me just an okay. example here. I'll just give you a personal example. And that is, you know, the uh, there was a situation with the cancer in, in that was diagnosed uh, over me or spoken over me, and 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 you know, I went to the Lord and and Brother Fred said we have the victory and and but it was that promise of Psalms one eighteen seventeen that said I will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That is that promise. And I said, amen to that promise. Okay. And I began to 
possess it and speak it over myself even when bad reports kept coming from from the three surgeons uh you know this test you know showed this and it's still there and and, and it just went on and on and on and but i possessed that scripture that promise because it was mine it was I, I took it and i took hold of it and i'm here tonight because of the promises of god okay so the first uh, element that's really important in um possessing your promises in other words solving your problems uh, is to discover what the promise is. You've got a problem, mm -hmm. you're facing a problem, family members are facing a problem, your business, your, uh, your congregation, whatever, is facing a problem. God deals with it with a promise. He shows you a promise, okay? So it's now, there are some other things that you can think about, other elements that are important and uh, the second one I want to talk about is claiming. You need to claim your promise, uh, just like Sherry said. That was her promise, mm -hmm. and that was her scripture. God spoke that. Now, how do you discover? I'm going to go back to discovery. It, it's not something you can do mentally. You need that assurance from the Lord that this is your promise. And, and it's very important for you to hear uh, the voice of the Lord. And so that's the place to start. You hear what the Lord says. That becomes a promise. Or it may be that uh, someone prophesies to you uh, mm -hmm. a true prophecy from the heart of God. And that becomes a promise to you that you have that. But that's not the end of the story. See, a promise is just a promise. And a lot of people uh, put the promises they just... Uh, Put them on a shelf. They don't do anything else with them. They just wait and see whether or not it's going to come to pass. But what I want to really emphasize tonight is you have some responsibilities in bringing forth from the heavenly realm mm -hmm. into uh, the natural realm natural, yes. where we actually receive and operate and walk in the solution to the problem. And so, first of all, you have to discover it. And the best way to discover it is to hear from the Lord yourself. So uh, take some time of fasting and praying, reading the scriptures, being around uh, people who would encourage you and, and even prophesy to you. So be in that right uh, area and hear from the Lord what he is promising you in your situation. Number two is you claim it. You begin to uh, you begin to declare, "This is mine. I I I have received it. The Lord spoke this uh, verse to me, and it's mine. I, I'm believing it, and this is what I'm bringing from heaven into this natural uh, world. So claim it. And another another thing is, and I call this number three is believe it. Uh, that you have to believe it. So I'll talk a little a moment about about faith. Mm -hmm. uh, what is faith? Well, we're all familiar with uh, Hebrews 11. 1. It's a good definition of it. It's a godly definition of faith. But what I want you to see, it is the evidence of the unseen realm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the promise is from the unseen realm, from the supernatural realm, and we need to begin to build up evidence uh, so we have more and more evidence mm -hmm. uh, of the supernatural realm. And, and so if you are healed one time, then that's evidence of the unseen Hallelujah. world. Hallelujah. And then if you're healed a second time or your child is healed, and, and so you begin to build those things up and then your faith is going to mature in that in that area. So you have Get to stronger. You have to believe. You have to believe without faith, it is impossible to please God. And with, let me also say without faith, it's impossible really to receive a lot of the promises that he has for you. Now, there are uh, even sinners who, who receive healing in the right uh, situation, the right environment. They come in uh, to a meeting where the spirit of God is moving. And so, uh, so 
they can be a believer and they can be healed or they can uh, prosper uh, uh, there are some very natural carnally minded people who who obey God's laws uh, let's say of uh, tithing and giving and and they prosper mm -hmm. because they are operating but may may still be very carnal or very uh, or even unsaved and so again there is no formula but there are some elements and you're going to need a strategy if you have a problem if you have a problem and you want god to be involved and to make changes and to solve that problem you need a strategy on how to do it and i'm so i'm offering you some elements uh the first one was to discover it uh, claim it and and that's not just a one-time thing that's over and over again and, and for example when uh, the holy spirit told the uh, sherry the verse about she will not die but live and declare the works she said that over and over and over again mm -hmm. and when the doctor's reports came back that uh, she was going to die in six months she I just used kept that. Saying it. she kept saying that to let it supersede the evil reports of the doctors uh, okay, so you also have to act on it. And uh, let me tell you a testimony about uh, Kenneth Hagin when he was a little boy. He was paralyzed. He was laying in his bed. He was laying there uh, uh, all day, all night, just laying in his bed because he was paralyzed. About all he could do, his mother would put the Bible in, uh, on there in front of him, and he could uh, just, with his hand, just kind of move to the next page. That's about the extent of uh, his mobility. Um, mm. And that's all he could do. But, uh, and so he got to the point where he started reading Mark 11, uh, 23 and 24 and 25. Now 23 talks about, you have to say, you have to say to the mm -hmm. mountain. So if you've got a problem, you have to begin saying to yes, that mountain, speak, speak speaking to it. it to it over and over again, and, and believe in your heart that what you say is going to come to pass. And see, that goes back to that claiming. Believe in your heart; it's going to go that it's going to happen. That that problem is going to be cast into the sea, and you believe and do not have any doubt in your heart. Then the verse. Uh, 24 says that you believe that you receive and so mm -hmm. so you believe you've received it okay and, and then of course uh, 25 is talking about forgiveness uh, so when you're praying uh, don't have unforgiveness in your heart so uh, don't have unforgiveness in your heart that's one of the elements don't mm -hmm. don't be bitter about people all right but sure. I, I have a, a quick uh, yeah. example here and that is I just had a, a text message from a woman who said that she had pain all over her body, that her joints were so painful that she could hardly walk and that she had not been able to go to work because of this, this problem. And what the Lord gave me was that a spirit of infirmity, that is something that she had it accepted and it lingered uh, in her body and it's demonic and it's uh, very demonic and it can be in children as well as adults and uh, it just lingers there and causes great destruction in that person's life in many different areas but what the spirit told me to tell her to do was was to um, use her authority to bind up that demonic force but then to forgive and that's the reason i okay, okay. to forgive anyone that had caused her grief or sorrow or had persecuted her that she was to release them forgive and release and and as she released them then her body would be released. I mean that that is um, exciting to me uh, that the the Lord he had the strategy. Right. He gave the strategy, and that was forgiveness. Okay, good. Okay, so 
I'm down to number four, and that is act on it. You have to act on what you believe. And so I'm going back to Kenneth Hagin as a little boy, uh, laying paralyzed on his uh, bed, and about all he could do was just move uh, one page of his Bible across so he could go to another page. And he was just uh, there focusing on uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 23, 24, and 25. And uh, and he was saying, and then he was claiming, I, I'm healed. I'm by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And, and I believe in my heart. And uh, I believe I receive my healing. And so he just confessed that day and night, mm -hmm. day after day, after month after month. And, and one day the Holy Spirit said to him, well, you believe you're healed. He said, that's right. I believe you couldn't convince me I'm not healed. And, he, and, and the Holy Spirit said, well, healed people, people who are healed are up walking around now, but he's paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> and so the Holy Spirit sees giving him a strategy. He has to act on what he believes. Amen. And, Amen. And, but he's paralyzed, but people who are healed are walking around. And so what he began to do was just bounce up and down on the table, I mean, on the bed. He's, he's just mm -hmm. been bedridden for months and, and, and because of a heart condition. Uh, and, and so he's just bouncing up and down on the bed and working his way down to the foot of the bed, just little by little, just by bouncing. He, he wasn't he wasn't moving. He was just mm, bouncing. Bouncing, bouncing, and, and bouncing. And when he got to the end of the bed, his legs started going off. And when he, uh, when his legs were all the way off the uh, foot of the bed, he stood up straight and he was healed. Hallelujah. See, it, it came because he was believing. Uh, he was believing and he even told the Lord that you cannot convince me I'm not healed because he had focused on those verses and said them over and over again. He had no doubt in his heart, and then he acted on it. See, he'd, he'd been claiming it, but now he was acting on it. And when he got to the foot of the bed, standing up, he was healed. And he walked into, uh, into the kitchen uh, table uh, where his grandfather uh, was sitting and, and his grandfather said, so Lazarus has risen from the dead. <laughs> oh, cost him Lazarus. He said, I am. And so he sat down there and he wanted to eat. He hadn't eaten with his, <laughs> with his family for months and months. Uh, he was healed. What was the real important thing? Acting on what you believe. See, acting on the promise. The promise is in the supernatural realm. We have to bring it here. There are things that we can do to appropriate, to possess the promises to solve the problems that we face Amen. in Amen. life. Now, we need to remember that patience is real important. Patience is about God's timing. And so we have to be patient. There's a lot of people that get angry with God because they think it's going to happen immediately. And when it doesn't happen the way they think it and the, and the timing that they think, then they get angry with God. And let me tell you, that never is helpful. That is never helpful to get angry with God, <laughs> who is the promise giver and the promise keeper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is a faithful God. He is the faithful God. Amen. He is faithful. And uh, we can't get angry with God. And so, we know some people that have gotten angry with God because they thought God was going to do it a certain way. And they he, God didn't do it their way. Uh, and they had a formula. They, they were applying they had, a formula. They had a some, formula. Some preacher on the TV gave them a formula, formula. And it didn't work. It didn't work like they thought it was going to work. So I'm not giving you formulas. I'm giving you some elements Amen. saying you Amen. have a responsibility. God has already done all he's going to do. He sent Jesus to the cross to die for you. Let me say one more thing about being angry. Okay. It does not benefit or profit you 
to get angry with God. It does nothing to God. God does not change. That's right. He's steadfast. He's faithful. He's God is love. And so he's not going to move uh, from that position. Who does it injure or who does it damage and bring destruction to is that person who is angry with God. That's right. And we have seen this. We have seen it with people that uh, that we love and we uh, desire for for them to be whole and and to be prosperous and and one has just now begun to come out of that anger and and now now their bodies are being healed and they're they're joyful again and they have gladness in their heart again and so that that anger is is very destructive okay so i have these seven points i'm going through to begin with before we look at some other scriptures but uh, the first one was to discover it then to claim it believe it act on it have patience be patient with god that's a fruit of the spirit and uh you have to go with his timing and number six is be in a community of believers see uh we believe the scriptures we we began uh studying the scriptures about healing and we believe but we were in a congregation that nobody had ever seen a miracle nobody had ever experienced a miracle nobody had ever experienced a divine healing i talked to a lot of people none of them did nor did they believe in those things and so the holy spirit told us to leave those people we had to leave the unbelievers mm -hmm. and you might say well what's the biblical uh, foundation for that well in uh mark chapter six uh uh in nazareth in his own hometown jesus could there do no mighty works because of their unbelief see that congregation we were in was filled with unbelief now they would go through the rituals of praying for mm -hmm. people to be mm -hmm. healed uh, but they all died and uh, mm -hmm. because of they were filled the whole congregation was filled with unbelief they they preached unbelief and so the people were filled with unbelief so you have to preach uh belief and, and faith. faith and healing and uh, prosperity and all of those things in order for people's faith to arise and if they faith if they preach things that are uh, contrary uh to uh, faith, then the people are going to be filled with doubt and unbelief. And so Jesus could in Nazareth, and let me tell you, if he could not do anything, any mighty miracles around unbelief, you cannot either, <laughs> because the, the disciple is not above the teacher or the master. And also in Mark chapter 8 in Capernaum, uh, they brought to Jesus a blind man mm -hmm. and asked him to heal him. And he had to take him out of the city. Listen to this. He mm -hmm. had to take him out of the city. He healed his eyes, gave him sight, and then told the man, don't go back there. Don't. What he's doing was telling mm -hmm. him. He had to take him away from the unbelievers to heal him. And then he said, don't go back to the unbelievers. Why? Because you lose your healing. If you get around mm -hmm. uh, uh, unbelievers, they're going to talk you out of your healing. And, you know, you can be talked out as well as you can be talked into healing. And so it's important to be in a community of believers, people who believe in the wonder-working miracles mm -hmm. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's my seventh oh, well, 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 I, I just want okay. to say something to okay. Tommy. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, thank uh, Tommy for letting Brother Fred and I be a part of talking with uh, Phoenix uh, about her her child and and about the hearing uh, situation. And I just want to uh, thank you, Tommy, for allowing Brother Fred and I to to be uh, a part of 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 prayer. For that child, as well as um, bringing forth uh, the gifts that God has given to us uh, to give to other people, so I just wanted to 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 thank you for your faith 
That's the seventh point I want to make in this introductory section because there's a lot of other things we can talk about on appropriating the promises. But the number seven is be grateful. You need a, an attitude of mm -hmm. gratefulness. And uh, when we were in uh, Texas uh, a few days ago, the, after a service, a man came up to me and uh, said uh, that I had a banner over me of gladness. And I was telling my son about it. And he said, gladness includes gratefulness because you're glad to see somebody. It, you're glad. And, but that's who I am. I, I, I do have a banner of gladness. So, a long time ago, the Holy Spirit said I had been anointed with the, the oil. oil of joy above my brethren. I, I just have joy. Well, joy is a, a fruit of the Spirit, and it's a powerful force. And we need joy. And we need, uh, because the, the Bible says, count it all joy. You're going to go through some things, but count it all joy. Because if they can't uh, get your joy, they can't keep your goods. Mm -hmm. And so... The enemy's going and trying to steal your joy because that's your strength trying to, to steal that. And with gratitude, uh, it just uh, causes us to grow dark in our thinking. If we do not have gratitude for all the things the Lord is doing, and I, I guarantee you can make a list uh, in your life of, uh, of the wonderful things that God is doing in your life. And uh, now I want to just uh, uh, talk about uh, a, a really important thing, and that is uh, Peter. Uh, second, I won't share you go through this. Uh, I believe it's Second Peter um, one. What is it nine and ten? Let's see. You have it. Okay, I want to talk about the promises, the promises of God. He gives us everything that pertains to life okay. and godliness. And therefore, there are several different things in these two verses I want to talk about. Okay. And everything, it's about the power though. See, and to appropriate the promises, you have to know and operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's the way this starts. Then it talks about your calling. Then it talks about the promises. And so there's just so much in this, on these a couple of verses. I want Sherry to read these. We'll just go slowly. Second Peter 1, 3 and 4. For his divine power has granted to us, it's all of us, everything pertaining to life and godliness. Okay, so you need that power for everything in life and godliness, all the problems that you face in life. You need the power. Amen. Okay, go ahead. Through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through, his, through these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. Okay, here's the promises. But remember... Behind the promises is the power. And we've got to, to appropriate or possess our promises. We have to activate the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Okay, go ahead. So that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world on account of lust. Okay. By the promises, you partake of the nature of God. And now that's really important. Mm -hmm. He is promising you all these things. And when you begin to appropriate them, when you begin to possess the promises, you're going to become more and more like Christ. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. When you, let me say it again. When yeah. you begin to possess the promises, you will become more and more like Christ. Amen. Okay, it Amen. all starts back up here with your power and your calling. And the calling, of course, comes from him speaking to you. And that's a, an everyday process. It's not just a one, uh, it's a one-time thing. It's mm -hmm. every day. You need to be listening to the voice of the Lord because he's calling you unto himself 
Every day, every day, he's calling you to himself. He's giving you direction. He's giving you guidance. He, he's telling you what to do. And, and he's giving you strategies, important strategies, significant strategies uh, to overcome the enemy, to possess the promises. And, and that you're going to find that out in his presence in his presence mm -hmm. and you're going to need the power of god to bring forth the promises you know we prayed for our oldest son jason for how 22, 22 years 22 years 22 years for him to be delivered and set free from drugs and other evil activities and it wasn't until that the lord we brother fred heard from the Spirit of the Lord, the scripture in Isaiah 49. 49 verses 24 and 25. Though your son is a legal, legal captive, captive, I will, will deliver, deliver him. And There's a promise. That, There's that, a promise. Was, that was the promise. And the strategy was for us to proclaim that promise. We to spoke. possess it. We, we, oh, we told him about it. But you know, it was, it was a promise to me. It wasn't a promise to him because it was a promise to me. He said, though your son is a legal captive, mm -hmm. I will deliver him. So the promise was to me, but it was a concerning my son. I brought him into the process because I told him that God was delivering him. And, and sure enough, he was uh, arrested and, and in jail that day. And uh, he, he was uh, freed from... Uh, from drugs in that time that he was in the jail. He turned and, back to the Lord. And he was facing uh, eight years of prison. Uh, but the Lord, as the Lord promised, he delivered him. He, my son never spent a day in prison. Now, I want to update you and bring you up to last Friday. I had lunch with him. And uh, he told me that uh, he's working in a manufacturing job and doing quite well. He uh, has progressed to a welder uh, and he's making good money. And he has been listening over time to podcasts. But in recent times, he has been listening to Bible studies uh, on uh, where he is determining what the Bible studies are. He's de because he's searching for his calling. He, he's mm -hmm. trying to identify how how he is to function uh he knows that he is a prophet in the end days uh but he he is he does not uh connect with other prophets he feels that god has a special calling on him and he's uh, searching for that and one other thing he's writing a sermon yes uh and he <laughs> shared the sermon with me and that was last Friday. And, and so oh. he's at a totally different place than he's ever been in his life. And it's a promise that has, uh, that we've possessed. It was a promise for us. Amen. It concerned our son, but it was a promise to us. And uh, we were possessing that promise even, even this day and seeing Amen. marvelous uh, changes in his life. Uh, uh, but I want to say to you tonight, if you have a family member, whether it be, you know, your child, your sister, your brother, your yeah, some family member uh, that that you have prayed for and prayed for for years, then this is the message for you tonight that you need to ask the Lord for the promise in his word. And then you need to take that promise, possess it, speak it, proclaim it over that family member and believe the Lord that it's done, that it's accomplished, that it's manifested and God will do it. God is no um, respecter uh, of, of persons. If he'll do it for us, he'll do it for you. And so I just want to say that to you tonight because I have a, a heavy heart tonight for some of you that have been believing the Lord uh, for your family, for a friend, someone that 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 needs deliverance, and and you can receive and see that manifested if you'll just believe the Lord. 
See, I had uh, prayed uh, for many years for my son, but I had prayed ineffectively. I know that now. And I needed those promises and because no one had taught me what I'm teaching you tonight. But I've learned these things uh, in the uh, University of Hard Knocks. Uh, we've learned these things. And so that's why I'm passing them along to you. That you need to discover the promises that God has for you concerning the problems in your family and in your life a situation you need to discover those promises and you need to bring these elements into play and ask god how, how they all fit together uh, because there is no formula but when you spend time with the holy spirit and you spend time with the lord they will give you the strategy so so it's not just it's not a formula, but it's a kingdom strategy that comes from heaven, and they mm. will show you what needs to be done, and, and it certainly starts with a promise, but you need to be working on a relationship with the Holy Spirit because he is speaking to you, and the Lord is always speaking, and you need to hear what the promise is, and, and it's not he doesn't necessarily always speak with words, with human words. Mm -hmm. See, when his presence moves on you, mm -hmm. he's, he's still the Lord. He's still mm -hmm. the voice. He's still the word. And so if you just have his presence, uh, then you he's speaking to you. Uh, and you may not hear words. You may not hear anything that sound like words, but you may have... You may have uh, dreams or visions. For example, Job talks about he gives us dreams and he gives instructions in the dreams. There may mm -hmm. be no words there, but you had dreams. And, and he says he seals those instructions in the night season. So we need to spend time with him 24-7, mm -hmm. be open to the Lord speaking to you. See, that's what praying without ceasing involves always praying because you're always open to the Holy Spirit and sensitive to what he is saying to you. And, and when you find things, you begin to write them down, begin to, to speak them out, mm -hmm. begin to claim them uh, and, and speak them over and over and over again. Uh, don't do like I did, pray ineffective for years, years because I hadn't had the right promises. I mm -hmm. didn't know how to appropriate uh, the promises, but God broke through uh, my uh, carnality and showed me uh, the promises that I needed to believe for. And I began to do these things that I'm sharing with you tonight. Uh, maybe I didn't do all of them. I didn't, may not have done them in the right order, but, but I did what was needed in my situation. And you need to do what's needed in your situation. But discover those promises. That's really critical. And you do that by having a relationship with the Lord, hearing his voice. And how do you hear his voice? It, well, you're going to have to just put your body on the altar, on God's mm -hmm. altar. And and it and because Jesus said you lose your life you'll gain my life. Amen. Uh, that's Amen. the that's the concept. You lose you lay down your agendas you pick up his uh, his agendas. Uh, so when you take up your cross and follow him, he's going to be talking to you.